And a happy Friday, 1034. Good to have you with us. Uh, coming up Monday, columnist Lois Henry, and today your host is uh, President and CEO Richard Bean talking to Dr. Brett Lee Hockey from Butology. Butology. Thank you, Brett. Brett, we were talking on the break a little bit about yourself. You went to Notre Dame. You're from Indiana. I am. And when did you come to our lovely community? How I ended up in Bakersfield is I was, uh, I'm a board certified plastic surgeon and trained in the Midwest. And one of my uh, training programs, the last one that I was at was University of Pittsburgh. And University of Pittsburgh is, uh, has produced more chairman of plastic surgery programs probably than any any training program in the country and just like many things in life uh, who you know is how job opportunities come about and actually that's that's a very good way to to do things when you're talking about surgery and um, I I had my the people at Pittsburgh were trying to help me find opportunities and more so chairman of programs, in my case, Loma Linda University, was a Pittsburgh graduate, and they need help, and they call up Pittsburgh, and they say, who do you have coming out this year? I need a craniofacial surgeon, which is what I am, and uh, that's the short story of how I ended up in California. I'm from the Midwest, from Chicago area, uh, spent time in the snow, mm-hmm. and uh, I had um, got tired of the snow, so I was looking for places where there was no snow, and boy, I found it out here in California. And you came out here in 2006, you say? I, I came to Loma Linda University in 1999. Okay. That's when I got the, completed my training. Spent six years there as a full-time attending at Loma, Loma Linda University. And there I was specialized in, in children's surgery, which in reconstructive surgery is um, children who have cleft lip and palate, who have uh, other types of in our terms are congenital anomalies. Sometimes they use the word birth defects. I don't particularly like to use that term. Uh, But special children with special needs and um, most of what children have is is facial deformities and that's what I did for my specialty. And then I ended up in Bakersfield after I left University, uh, Loma Linda University. Well those are some credentials other than where you went to college at Notre Dame. I I, I think those are impeccable. (laughs) You know it's too bad you had to go to Notre Dame. uh, (laughs) So sorry about that. All right so let's get down to what's popular here. What do you see a lot here? What 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 is uh, what kind of surgeries are you doing? The, here mo- the, the most same? common procedure we we do here is the same as national. It's breast augmentation, and and next would be uh, the tummy tuck procedure. And I think that's directly related to to women and their childbearing. And the the women at a certain point in their life they want to get back some of what youth, what they had sure. in youth, right. and what the what has been sort of changed with having children. And so those are the most common procedures that we do. Liposuction, of course, is, is common also. And for myself, with, with facial surgeries, I, I do a lot of facelifts here in, in the area. And, uh, and what ages? Would that be older? Uh, when the facelifts can anymore. It's, it's from 39, 38 really? on. Yeah. And, you know, a, a woman was in the other day. Uh, she was 76 years old and was asking if she was too old and my answer that I gave her was that it's it's not how old you are in years it's it's how your how your body how how your body is aged and so for example I I did an 80 year old facelift on an 80 year old and 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 but she was didn't look 80 yeah and she didn't act 80 and we you know Everybody gets cleared Mm -hmm. by their medical doctor who knows them real well. And sometimes the medical doctor says, you know, it's best for you not to have surgery. And because this surgery that I'm doing is cosmetic surgery, and it needs to be safe. And that's what we're all about. And that's what, when you're looking for a surgeon, you want to make sure that they're all about safety for you. Even if it means them telling you, I think you better not have surgery. Or oftentimes I'll say you want two or three things let's just do one at a time to keep it safe Mm -hmm. and it and so it's it's because it's surgery and as we were talking there's there when one is doing surgery there's um, there's issues that are that are involved and safety is the main issue 
Right, right. And I know you do a lot of surgeries. You know, I came across uh, an interesting statistic. I guess this is a national st- statistic, which says that 60% of the folks who have uh, had plastic surgery had an annual household income of thirty to ninety thousand dollars, and more importantly, forty percent of those reported a household income of only thirty to sixty thousand dollars. That, to me, would uh, that's surprising to me because I know it's not cheap, but really, you're going down on the income stream. So, really, there's a lot of folks who are not earning six figures getting plastic surgery. Oh, absolutely. You see a lot of that here? Absolutely. The uh, common misconception is that that those that are accessing plastic surgery are people with just lots of money, and that's partly because that's what gets shown on TV. Right. But there's regular folks in every town in this country that are accessing plastic surgery, and it's not out of their budget, and the the reason and the way that it gets gets uh, accomplished is people finance, and um, we have many people that come to us that that finance their surgery just like financing one's automobile, and there are companies uh, nationally set up to finance uh, medical procedures, and it's not just cosmetic surgery uh, in Especially in our day and age, there are people without health insurance have to get their gallbladder taken out. Mm-hmm. And they have to get it done. And these companies service patients, individuals that, that need to get uh, health care, both traditional health care, gallbladder, appendix, um, dental work done, and that don't have health insurance to help them with it. So they have payment systems that are set up. Oh, that's excellent. You know, we have uh, Dr. Brett Lehockey of Butology with us today, uh, 631-1230. This is California Smart Talk Radio. If you have any questions for Dr. Lehockey, feel free to call in. Uh, Brett, so if I'm thinking about plastic surgery and I'm not sure, how would I go about, uh, do you do consultations with somebody called Butology and just say, you know, I'm thinking about eyelids or, or whatever, right. and then you... I What's think, the procedure there? Yeah, I think the the first thing I I the comment I'd like to make on that is is something that I I talk about every week and with with patients is should I really be here? Do I quote need plastic surgery? And and w- one of my answers is well nobody needs anything that that I do, but it does enrich your life. It can help you in your job. It's been well known that that people who who look better have some advantages in life and so I think the first question is do I really want to get this done and my answer is that it depends on how much it bothers you what I like to say is if if it's something you worry about that you'd like to change and every day you get up and you look in the mirror and you say oh my eyelids bother me and for women it's they're putting on their makeup and they can't get the eyeshadow on or the or the mascara on the way they used to and it bothers them every day versus you you're going out for dinner and you want to look nice and and you say oh my eyelids bother me but not every day i think that's the determinant if it's if you have something that you're thinking about every day then it's time perhaps to call and going back to your your statement of how to call yeah you just you just call we don't charge for the consultation and to come in and, and talk about it and at first you will you'll get a, a receptionist who will give you uh, quite a bit of information we train our our staff quite well to to help you before you even see the doctor understand what you're asking for how we can help you to make sure it's right for you so that you know what's what the procedure is all about before you even come in to, to see us. And then uh, the appointment's set up and you come in and we talk. So now you, you are obviously a plastic surgeon. If I were going in for just for Botox or something, you don't do that. I don't tend to do the Botox in our office. And that is because uh, Dr. Millenshaw uh, does all the non-surgical procedures. Personally, I love that because what that allows me to do is 
uh, for example, when, before I came here, when I was at Loma Linda University, I did lasers, I did Botox, I did the, the fillers that are, that are non-surgical fillers, and I did facelifts and breast augmentations, and as I mentioned, the craniofacial surgery. Uh, as I've come here, I've been able to concentrate just on the surgical aspect, and I don't have to concern myself with, right. with learning all about the newest laser. Do I want to get this laser? How do you learn? How do you work mm-hmm, this laser to mm-hmm. the maximum effect? And Dr. Millenshaw does that in our practice. So he's the one that goes to the courses on Botox. He keeps up on the um, the latest filler that's available, and it's time consuming. And that's that's actually the beauty of our practice. I get to concentrate on what I want to concentrate on, and, and he does too. And it's best for the consumer. And I think Dr. Shaw is going to be calling in at the last break, so I'd like mm-hmm. to talk to him a bit a bit about uh, what what he's seeing, what kind of trends. So. Uh, right. That's Dr. Millenshaw. Yes, correct. Millenshaw, right, because Botox and the fillers, they are just so sought after and so popular. And what's nice is they do make a difference. And that's one of the, the things that for the consumer eh, th- that they have to, to work through that, of course, we help them with is what's the right thing for you? What really works? And just because you saw it on TV or heard about it on one of the you know the national health shows doesn't always mean it works real well. Mm-hmm. What uh, what kind of procedures are you seeing in men? The what most you... common the most common procedure that that I see is liposuction, and that's a whole range, young to older, mainly and, around the stomach. Yes, right, because right. that's where us guys get it. Yeah, right. uh, and necks, we get a, a, a so you can a, lipo the neck, the fat that's underneath your chin. No kidding. Well, mm. I had to take you to work on uh, me. Uh, Check this out. I can't see the mics in <laughs> okay, the way. Right. <laughs> well, turkey neck going there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, loose skin is not liposuction. It's it's the the fullness underneath. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. The loose skin. I wish we had a good non-surgical uh, solution for that, but there isn't. Uh, you know, my mother. Every time I go home, my my beautiful 80 year old mother asks me about the loose skin in her neck, and I tell her the same thing every time. Sorry, Mom, it's a facelift. That's the only thing that we can do for right, that. There right. just isn't anything else. No. All right, so uh, liposuction is number one with men. And what upper else? eyelids. Upper eyelids. Are, are very common. And then uh, some men will get an, an increase in the size of their their breast tissue area. And I don't want to call it breast tissue because it's not breast tissue like um, like women have. The technical medical name for it is gynecomastia and what that what it is it's glandular type tissue but it's also kind of tough because us guys are tough and it makes some men have a growth of their breast area that looks more like a woman i think i saw a man, seinfeld, man boobs. seinfeld <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. On right. wearing the man row right. so you see a lot of that that's not that's different from a pec implant type it's a though. it's a, actually the opposite a pec okay. implant is Putting a muscle or putting an implant underneath to increase the size and the uh, the gynecomastia is to make it look more normal, okay. less like a woman. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't yeah, even know about thought, that. Huh? Good. We're going to take a break yes. here. We're going to come back. I think Dr. Millen Shaw is going to be calling in. Interesting stuff. Six three one twelve thirty California Smart Talk Radio. We'll take a break. Talk Radio. We'll take a break. Talk Radio. 